I'm wondering which one of these apples will taste the best. And how do I determine that? Hmm. Well, I have to say here that all four apples measured extremely well. I don't see any problems here. I think that they're all state-of-the-art apples. Now, what do I do with this data? Hmm. Maybe I should add them together. That will give me an answer. All right, going by my measurements, the winner, the best apple, is the Granny Smith. And the worst one is the Golden Delicious. And the Honey Crisp and the Red Delicious fall in the middle. So it is decided. Granny Smith is the best apple of the four. Right. It seems that one of the hottest topics today in, in the audio enthusiast community is how much significance should be given to the objective technical measurements of audio gear when making your purchasing decisions. Now, measuring audio gear is nothing new. Manufacturers have been doing it since the invention of the radio over a hundred years ago. Hi-Fi companies have been using measurements for marketing their products for decades, bragging about power output, frequency response, THD, wow and flutter, sensitivity, signal to noise ratio, etc. The equipment they used back then to evaluate these parameters was fairly primitive compared to the incredible accuracy now possible with modern computer, computerized instruments. So now we have the equipment to precisely quantify how amplifiers, DACs, speakers, and associated peripherals perform like never before. But what are we to do with all that data? Well, some say, ignore it and just rely on your own two ears. If it sounds good to you, why worry about measurements? And I would guess that the vast majority of listeners would agree with that sentiment. However, there is an emerging segment of vocal enthusiasts 
who have become followers of a particular website, who put measured statistics as the number one criteria when praising and choosing hi-fi components. More on that later in the video. Let's get on now with the primary subject of this episode. Aoshida Audio sent me a couple of SMSL products to check out a while back, and they are the DO100 DAC and the HO100 headphone amp. Now I have a few audio setups at home, but my desktop system is probably the one I use most. It currently consists of a Mac Mini that streams Apple and Amazon Music, rip CDs, through a Singzer Spidiff bridge. It has, I use a modern version of a Dynaco ST72 amp and an Adcom preamp. And, I, and the speakers are a pair of Proac Response 2.5 floor standards. Now, SMSL was founded in 2009 and they're based in Shenzhen, China. And unless you've totally been out of touch with modern hi-fi gear, you will not have missed the enormous impact that Chinese brands like SMSL and Topping have made in the electronics marketplace, and especially in the world of DACs and headphone amps. Now, SMSL is a very busy and competitive company, and they're continuously releasing new lines of products that are, that are kind of challenging to keep track of. For example, looking at their website, they currently offer 17 different DACs, ranging in price from $90 to $3,500. These here are compact units with small footprints that you can easily stack on your desk or fit into an audio rack. Looking at the DO100 DAC, it has a simple glass display that tells you that the, what the frequency of the audio file you're listening to, or the volume level, or the input, and other settings. You can use the single knob on the front or the included remote to control its functions. Around the back are the inputs and output jacks, RCA and XLR, which is fantastic at this price level. It has the usual coaxial, optical, and USB inputs, but with USB-C, like it's 2022 or something. And there's also a uh, Bluetooth antenna connection, which I personally would never use, and I do appreciate the IEC power socket, which means there's no wall wart to deal with. It feels solid and well constructed, and I think it's amazing what you can get for such a reasonable price. And this model employs dual two-channel ESS DAC chips to take care of all that digital converting to analog business. I've been using this DAC as my daily driver for a few weeks and I've been very happy with its functionality and sound quality. That's the thing about a lot of modern hi-fi gear. Very often you just hook it up and it just works. And this sounds great, it works great. Just listen to the music and you're happy. Now it's only when you start comparing and a being components that you become aware of their strengths and shortcomings. My first ever DAC was an AudioQuest Dragonfly Black, and I was delighted with how it sounded. But when I tried a Shit Modi 3, a year later, I could clearly hear an improvement. So I ditched the Dragonfly and I used a Modi 3 for two years, and I was happy. Then I heard some topping DACs that were clearly better, and I switched to the much costlier D70S. Now this has become a bit of a pattern with my hi-fi gear, and I'm never seen to be satisfied. In this evaluation, I took out the old $99 Modi 3 and compared it to this DO100. And the DO100 has a much more pleasing presentation to me. The Modi 3 has some punch in it, but it's rather dark sounding in comparison. Not a lot of life and vitality in the mid-range and highs. Now I do have another SMSL DAC in-house that APOS Audio sent me a while back to try. The SU9N would be considered an upgrade to the DO100 and at $399 you can see what you get for the extra money. A larger case, a higher resolution color screen, you get balanced XLR outputs as well, the same remote, and a single 8-channel ESS DAC chip. You can also play with its sound color and use it in preamp mode. 
The SU-9N is a slightly upgraded version of the popular SU-9 DAC, but without the MQA support. That results in a price that's like $59 lower. And if you don't pay for services that include MQA files like Title or Cobuzz, then the SU-9N is worth considering. Head to head, the less expensive DO100 holds its own very well compared to the SU-9N. And I would say that if you only want to spend between two to three hundred dollars on a DAC, you would be more than satisfied with this model. I actually prefer the larger simple display. The smaller color screen on the pricier one is more difficult to read from a distance. But overall, the more costly SU-9N pulls ahead in regards to clarity, vibrance, and separation. This was apparent to me when I rapidly switched between them. And you may find that the difference you hear and see between the two DACs is worth spending the extra cash for. However, what SMSL has done is partner up the DO100 DAC with the HO100 headphone amp. And this matching amp has XLR inputs so it, it can connect to the DAC and take advantage of the balance connection. Why is balance better? Well, simply put, you often get a few decibels of more gain and the design of the XLR cables eliminates the possibility of hum entering the signal path. And if you've ever had to deal with the scourge of ground loop hum in your system, you'll appreciate balanced connections. As you may know, I am not a headphone guru but I do own a pair of Sennheiser HC650s for late night listening. And I must say that this little $140 amp is terrific. Like the DAC, it feels very solid and it has nice toggle switches in the front for power and input select and three gain settings. And there's also a nice volume knob that's easy to grip and rotate. The sound from it is clean, easy going and balanced. I would say its strengths are in the mid-range. Vocals are pleasant and silky smooth. Even when you turn it up, it remains impressively well-mannered and crisp. Is it as resolving or dynamic as the $500 Topping A90 I reviewed a few months ago? No, but it's not a million miles away considering the price. Now my primary headphone amp that I've owned for a couple of years is a Shit Valhalla 2. This evergreen model has been around for a few years and for $399 it's a genuine classic. It's powered by four tubes and is a perfect match for high impedance headphones like my Sennheisers. It's not such a great match for low impedance models like the Hi-Fi Man Sendaras that I reviewed a few months ago. It just has RCA connections, no XLR, but it can be used as a preamp, which I've done in the past. And it's not particularly tuby sounding or warm, and it also runs incredibly hot. I mean hot, not warm, hot. And that, along with its bulk, can limit where on, where on your desk you can position it. The HO100 runs cool, and for what I understand, will drive lower impedance headphones better than the Valhalla 2. Let's get back to the subject of objective measurements. Now, if you go to that particular website I talked about earlier, the Valhalla 2 was reviewed or rather measured in 2019 and did not do very well. And it was not recommended by the reviewer. Now, each of the site's reviews includes a graphic that ranks similar products based on measured performance. The far left has the highest measured models, and on the right side is the stuff at the other end of the spectrum, the gear that is considered to be unworthy. And the Valhalla 2 is ranked near the very bottom, on the far right side of the headphone amp list. Alternatively, the SMSL HO100 did very well and is ranked in the top 10. And you would automatically assume, assume that the shit amp is a piece of, well, shit. And the SMSL is 
far superior, one of the best, right? Well, in my A-B listing comparisons, the Valhalla 2 was by far the better sounding amp. It matched the HO100 in the mid-range, but had better clarity, dynamics, depth, and punch. Perhaps it's maybe not quite as neutral, but it's incredibly engaging. You know, I hadn't used it for a little while, so I kind of forgot how good it is. And like, like a lot of enthusiasts, the tube gear is put away during the summer months. The combined heat radiating, radiating from the ST70 amplifier and the Valhalla 2 in this room is ridiculous. So what does that tell me about all this measurement stuff? Well, I'm confident and predict there are many other lower rank components on these lists or these ranking lists that subjectively sound better than the ones rated near the top. Okay, let me summarize here. From my perspective, the combo of the SMSL D0100 and HO100 represent a tremendous value. For, for $390, you get two extraordinary components for a desktop or bedside system. And they provide a level of smooth and even-handed sound quality that is remarkable at that price. And yes, you can buy a single device that includes both the DAC and the headphone amp in, in, in a single box for around $400. But I personally prefer keeping them separate for better flexibility and future upgradability. Now, if you already own an entry-level type DAC and you want to try something a bit better, something that gets you a bit closer to the essence of the music, and you don't need MQA playback, then seriously consider the $400 SMSL SU9N. I believe it will keep you satisfied for a considerable period of time, or until you get that upgrade itch again. Regarding an upgrade to your headphone amp, the shit Valhalla 2 sounds very good, but is a bit impractical for some and is more of a niche product that is best used during the cooler months of the year. I would, however, strongly suggest that you consider the Topping A90. I have reviewed that one and I'll leave a link below. I'm going to put some affiliate links in the description box below in case you are really interested in checking them out and perhaps buying one. As always, if you like this video, <laughs> You, or you like what I do, please consider subscribing and give me a thumbs up because that, that really helps spread the word about my what I do here. So anyway, until next time, thanks a lot. So after all this, you may be asking, how do we know which piece of audio gear to buy if we're not using measurements? Well, just the way we choose what food to eat, by trying it. Yummy. Honey crisp is always the best one.